Hello, and welcome back to Let's Get Lit. In today's episode, we're going to be going over chapters 17 and 18 of J.D. Salinger's classic, The Catcher in the Rye. Let's see what exactly happens next, and what will happen next, shall we? All right, let's dive into chapter 17. Chapter 17 starts out with Holden arriving to the Biltmore earlier than expected. He says that as he's sitting there waiting for Sally, he sees all the different types of women sitting around waiting for their boyfriends or for guys to show up. He said that in a way it was sort of depressing to see all of them sitting there and he kept wondering what was going to happen to them after school. He figures that most would probably marry dopey guys and guys that talked about how many miles to a gallon their car gets, or guys that get mad when you beat them at golf or ping pong, or guys that are mean, or guys that never read books, and so on and so forth. He said the worst kind of guys are boring guys. Holden then says that at one time when he was at Elkton Hills, he roomed with a boy named Harris Macklin for about two months, and that he was very intelligent, but he was one of the biggest bores that Holden had ever met. Holden also goes on to say that he had a raspy voice and he never really talked much, but he was also a phenomenal whistler. Holden says he could whistle just about anything you could think of, and that he was always whistling whenever he was cleaning or hanging up his clothes or whatnot. As he's thinking about this memory, he says that well, maybe guys who are boring aren't that bad after all. Maybe they're sweet. Holden then says that he sees Sally coming up the stairs and she looks terrific. She had on a black coat and a black beret. And he said that she hardly ever wore hats, but the beret really did look nice on her. He also says that in that moment, he felt like marrying her the minute he saw her. And he tells the reader he knows he's crazy because he didn't even like her that much, and yet he couldn't stop the feeling that he was in love with her and wanted to marry her. They had a small conversation and exchanged pleasantries. Then she asks if she's late. Holden tells her no, but then tells the reader, yeah, she's about 10 minutes late. Or he then tells her they better hurry up or else they're going to miss the show that starts at 2.40. She asks what show they're going to go see, and he says, ah, I can't remember the name of it, but it's got the lunts in it. Sally gets very excited when hearing this news. Then they catch a cab to go to the theater, and along the way they begin to kiss and make out in the back. Holden says that twice the cab driver stopped short and he almost fell out of his seat. During the car ride, Holden says that he loves her, and he's not quite sure why he says it, but he says that in the moment, he really did mean it. She tells him that she loves him too, and she asks for him to promise that he'll let his hair grow out because crew cuts are very corny, and that his hair was very lovely. After this, Holden goes on to talk about the show, and, the, and that it really wasn't that half bad. He said it wasn't really crappy, but then goes on to give his synopsis about what the show is about. He tells the reader it's about this couple, and you see them from when they were young to middle age to old. He said the old couple were actually pretty good because they were big movie stars, so you could tell they were really phoning it in. After the first act, they go outside with everybody else so he can smoke a cigarette. While they're outside and smoking, he takes a look around and all the people who were also smoking. He notices one of the guys in the crowd and that he's a famous TV star, and how him and his girlfriend were making a big deal and talking loudly about the show so that way they could seem very smart and intelligent. Sally, on the other hand, was looking at the guy that was across the way and says, I know him from somewhere, but I can't quite remember. After a while, Holden says, well, maybe you should go over there and give him a big old kiss. And she actually gets pretty sore when he says this. Holden mentions, though, that not long after this, the guy notices her and comes over and begins to talk. He goes on to say that apparently his name was George something or other, and he went to Andover, and it was a really big deal. Holden then says that throughout the rest of intermission, they chatted and talked about places and people that he knew absolutely nothing about. Then the warning lights go off for the second act to begin, and they go in and take their seats. Holden says that after the show, Sally and George met up again and continued to talk about the show and what they thought of it. Holden thinks that George is going to follow them home in the cab because he keeps walking with them. However, George mentions that he's going to have drinks with some friends a few streets down. While in the cab, Sally asks Holden if they can go to Radio City Hall and ice skate. Through this conversation, Holden learns that the only reason Sally really wants to go and do this is because one of her classmates did it earlier the previous week, and now she wants to do it. Holden agrees and they go to Radio City. They rent the skates, and they also give Sally a small skirt to wear on the ice. Holden says that Sally knew she looked good and she had no problem flaunting it in front of him. Holden says the ironic thing is that they both looked really good on skates, but they were terrible skaters. And he says that after a while of them skating and pretty much hurting their knees, they decide to take a break and go inside and get something to drink. While sitting inside, Holden orders a Coke for Sally and tries to order a scotch and soda for himself. But the bartender says, no, 
and just gives him a Coke as well. As they're sitting down talking to each other, Sally asks Holden if he's going to come by on Christmas Eve and help trim the tree. Holden tells her that he's already written to her weeks ago and that for the 20th time, yes, he's going to come over and help her with the Christmas tree. As they're having this conversation, Holden lights a match and holds it until it almost burns his fingers. Then Holden suddenly gets into this mood and begins to have a conversation with Sally and asks her if, she's get, if she ever gets fed up. She's not sure what he means, but he goes on to explain that with school, all he ever thinks about is how he's not getting anything out of it. How school is pretty much just set up for boys to go in, create cliques, have friends, graduate, stick with those friends through life. He tells Sally that he hates living in New York with all the taxi cabs and buses and drivers yelling and phony guys that call actors angels going up and down the elevators. He simply just wants to go outside. Holden's getting a little excited at this moment and Sally asks if you don't mind stop yelling. Holden doesn't realize he's yelling so he quiets his voice down. He talks about the monotony of being older and how he's not looking forward to it. He then tells her that she's the only reason that he's still in New York, for well for anywhere for that matter. She gets flattered, but she tries to change the subject on it. Then Holden says that he has an idea. He said that he knows a guy in Greenwich Village that still owes him a favor and asks Sally if she would like to go with him to Vermont and Massachusetts. He said that he could get a car from this guy in Greenwich Village, they could take out about $180 that he had in the bank, and they would just go for a ride and stay in cabin. Then when the money runs out, he could get a job, they could live somewhere with a brook, and later they could get married or something, and he could chop all their firewood for the winter time and essentially kind of tries to plan his life out with her. Sally tells him, you can't do something like that all of a sudden. And then she sounded really sore when saying this. Holden then questions and says, well, why not? Holden doesn't realize his voice is also getting louder and she asks him to please stop screaming at me. She tells him that the, in the first place they're both practically children and if that they were up there he couldn't get a job and if he couldn't get a job they couldn't have money and if they didn't have money they would starve. Also they both had to finish school and they both had to get jobs. She then tells the, him that they will have plenty of time to do all of that stuff in the future, but they need to finish school first. Holden tells her it's not the same, that when they get older after he goes to school and graduates and then off to college and graduates, they'd have to get jobs where he makes a lot of money and then if, and then if they got married and when they went off, they'd have to send postcards and all of the politics that goes along with it. He then goes on to say how he doesn't want the monotony of average adult life. He asks her after all of this, don't you see what I mean? She tells him that she doesn't, and maybe he doesn't either. And then Holden knew in that moment that both of them didn't like each other in that moment. He then tells the reader he's kind of sorry he started the whole conversation to begin with. And then he tells her, come on, let's get out of here. You're giving me a royal pain in the ass if you want to know the truth. This really upsets Sally. She even begins to cry. Holden sees that he's upset her and he tries to apologize, but it's no use. After trying his hardest to give her an apology, she finally tells him to just leave leave her alone and that she can make her way back to her own house. So after a little bit of time, he gets his shoes and his belongings and he heads out. He tells the reader that as he's walking away, he doesn't even know why he started that conversation to begin with. He meant about going to Massachusetts and Vermont and everything else. Primarily because he wouldn't have taken her even if he wanted to, even if she wanted to go. He tells the reader that she wouldn't have been anybody to go with, but he does say that when he said it, he meant it. And that was the terrible part. He then ends by saying that he swears to God he's a madman. This is where chapter 17 ends. Now let's get into chapter 18. Chapter 18 starts and Holden is feeling hungry. So he goes into a drugstore and has a Swiss cheese sandwich and malted milk. After this, he then goes to the phone booth and figures out who he's going to buzz. He currently has Jane on his mind and wonders if she might be home. He says to the reader that if she is home, then he'll ask her to go out dancing or something of that nature. He then tells the reader that Jane is a very good dancer, and he remembers this from the first time he saw her. Holden goes on to elaborate how she was on a date that night when he met her with a guy named Pike or Mike or something. And Holden says that he was a swimmer and he was always wearing one of those latex spandex swimsuits whenever he was in the pool. Holden says he thinks that guy is just a bastard, but Jane made the excuse that he had an inferiority complex. Then Holden says that girls are really funny in that way. Holden goes on to explain that if they find a guy attractive and he's really just a bastard, they'll make up the excuse that he has an inferiority complex. However, if the guy is not attractive and the girl doesn't like him, then he just happens to be a bastard with an inferiority complex. Holden gives the example of Bob Robinson, who is one of his roommates that this has happened to. As Holden is trying to ring Jane on the phone, she doesn't answer and he hangs up. Then he goes through his little black book of names to see who to ring up. The only three numbers he had were 
James, Mr. Antolini, a teacher who was at Elkton Hills, and his father's office number. He keeps forgetting to put people's names in it. So he finally gave a ring to Carl Luce, who graduated from Wooten High School a few years before he left. Holden says that Carl was about three years older than him, oh, and that he really didn't like him much, but he was very intellectual and had the highest IQ of any boy at Wooten. Holden thinks that he might want to have dinner with him or something and maybe have a slightly intellectual conversation. Carl answers the phone and tells Holden that he's not able to join for dinner, but he could meet him for drinks at the Wicker Bar on 54th at 10 p.m. So Holden agrees and then hangs up. Holden notices that he still has some time to kill before then, so he goes over to Radio City to go to the movies. When he bought his ticket and went in, he saw the Rockettes doing their stage show. He mentions how they were kicking their legs very high and mentions it's the same kind of show that he's seen every year since he was a kid. Then he goes on to describe the rest of the Christmas show and how all the angels are coming out of these boxes and there's crosses everywhere and it's very religious. Holden says that if Jesus could see all of this, he probably would throw up just from the ridiculousness of everything. Holden also says that he saw it with Sally the year before and she kept saying, oh, how beautiful it is, but he kept making fun of it. To which Sally calls him a sacrilegious atheist and Holden jokes, eh, well, maybe I am. He then gives a small little memory about how when him and Allie were eight years old, they went to go see this show with their parents. And to them, the best part of the show was the drummer. Even though the drummer only had two or three moments out of the whole show, Holden mentions how he did his job really well. Then Holden really appreciates the fact that he does this and he does it well. He then says they tried to send him a postcard, but he wasn't sure that he ever got it. Holden says once this is over, then the movie begins to play. He gives us a little brief synopsis of the story and how it's about two people who fall in love. One is a duke that has amnesia and the other is a very homely girl who's the publisher and he helps her out and then he becomes a big author and so on and so forth. Holden says the movie ends on a very sweet note where the duke, after this whole turmoil ends, ends up marrying the author. The woman who is going to marry the duke before the amnesia ends up marrying the homely girl's brother and everybody lives happily ever after. Holden mentions how the ending is supposed to be really sappy and the woman next to him is crying her eyes out and he thinks it's all just phony. After the movie, he begins to walk towards the wicker bar where he's supposed to meet Carl Luce. As he was walking, he sort of began thinking about war and what war movies did to him. He then goes on to tell the reader that he really can't stand the idea of war and that he really would never want to be in the army. He says this because he tells the reader that DB was in the army for about four years. Holden also says that DB was in the war and he landed on D-Day. Holden says that DB never really liked the war and every time that he was on furlough, all he did was lay on his bed. Holden also mentions that DB never had to shoot anybody and never got hurt. He said that his duty was pretty much to just drive this cowboy around all day in the command car. DB joked that if he ever had to shoot anybody, he wouldn't know which direction to shoot. Holden remembers when Ali asked DB who the best war poet was, if it was Rupert Brooke or Emily Dickinson. Ali said Emily Dickinson. Holden says he wasn't really too sure which one was the best because he didn't really read much poetry. Holden then goes back to war, saying how he was in the scouts for about a week, but he couldn't make it, especially with everybody lined up one right after the other and they were all told to stare at the boy in front of them's neck and march. Holden then goes on to say that though DB hated war so much, he got Holden to read a book called A Farewell to Arms. DB told him it was a great book, but Holden can't understand why. Holden goes on to explain a little bit about the book and the main character and how he was all phony and he just couldn't get into it. Holden also says that the other book that DB really loved but he never could get into was The Great Gatsby. DB tells him, ah, you're just too young to appreciate it. But Holden doesn't think so. At the end of the chapter, Holden goes back to the idea of war and says he's glad that now they've invented the atomic bomb. He said that if there was ever another war, he would sit right on top of the atom bomb and he would volunteer for it. This is where chapter 18 ends. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and as always, stay lit.